A basic principle of libertarianism is that you own yourself. The alternative becomes absurd. The axiom, you own yourself, has difficulty, but it doesn't become absurd. The opposite becomes absurd. I own you, you own me, we own him, I'll decide what you wear, you decide who he marries, he decides what I eat. You see, you see what's happening? We go crazy. How many of us in here know someone who's not very good, or perhaps terribly incompetent, at running their own lives? May I see a show of hands? Okay. How many of us are sick and tired of those people trying to run ours? You see, the problem in that whole alternate axiom is that the decent people don't actually get to be in charge and run the world. You know, it's not the Mother Teresa that says, elect me, elect me. It's the Stalins, the Nixons, the LBJs. Libertarianism is, in all likelihood, the principles that your mom and dad taught you. It's the principles that the America was founded on. Welcome to Liberty Explained. My name is Chris Spangle. Liberty Explained is your guide to libertarianism, and our goal is to share libertarian solutions for the future. Visit libertarianexplained.com to subscribe to the podcast or to search out the library of issues and book recommendations. Uh, once again, my name is Chris Spangle, and I'm the host of We Are Libertarians that produces this podcast. The voice that you heard at the beginning of this is Marshall Fritz the founder of the Advocates for Self-Government, and the first episode in the feed that we have posted at LibertyExplained.com. Great, probably the best explanation of what libertarianism is. My co-hosts are Julia Geyer and Levy Rainey, and, well, let's explain what Liberty Explained is. So this was your idea, Julia. Tell us what Liberty Explained is. <laughs> okay, well, um, I... I came up with this idea because I, I needed it because during the recent lockdown, I approached Chris because I was like, hey, you know, I'm talking to a lot of people about libertarianism and they were kind of like asking me a lot of questions about it. And I wanted some materials to send them that were like easily digestible to people that um, don't know anything about the party. And to people that had never heard anything about the party, like someone who's basically like a, a real like nudie blank slate. So um, we both came up with the idea for this essentially <laughs> um, for Liberty Explained. And it is basically your guide to libertarianism. So if you're someone that like literally doesn't know anything about libertarianism, this is the place that's like perfect for you to learn all about it um, and we're gonna roll it out in a very easily consumable fun podcast and um it's just gonna be like uh, a cool yeah, it's way gonna be, to learn about it yeah it's gonna be bite-sized and easy now speaking of knowing nothing is our good friend Le levy rainey one of my best friends in the world and she is uh, she, you have been a guest on We Are Libertarians, and you get deer in the headlights looks. You, you, you're like, I don't like doing this, and it's because yeah. <laughs> you're like, we're, we're talking over your head. So what I wanted to exactly. do was, was have you on and be the voice of the listener. Because why? I'm just excited to be here to learn. Honestly, like that's what I feel like my role is here, and like to re represent just the average listener and like people, my peers, um, because I've recognized that a lot of people are interested in libertarianism. Um, but I don't ever know how to share the information. It's the same thing with Julia. So I'm just, I'm really excited. Yes. Yeah, so Liberty Explained started with this idea of creating a resource and Julia and I talked back in July about this and got the ball rolling and we put together a research team and we solicited questions from a hundred different people from all of our different social medias. And, um, we have 30 episodes that we're going to be working on starting to record today. And, so we've got the next 30 shows planned out and we took these questions and a team of us went to work on them. About half a dozen people started doing research and writing out these questions. And so what we're going to do is take those short, those questions, answer them in easily understood ways. It'll be a video on YouTube and Instagram TV. It will be a podcast on the audio podcast feed. It will be posted on the website with the bullet points that we used in our show research so you can go back and quickly refer to this stuff. So it will be a post that you can share easily with friends. And uh, you can search by a bunch of different topics using the tags on the website. And for those of you watching on YouTube, let me actually show you the website. Um, 
excuse me. So this is the website. And up here at the top, you've got the, the about section. You've got quizzes. So if you don't really know where you stand and you're kind of looking for a, a quick explanation, you've got up in this area the quizzes that you can take, like the political compass I side with. And then there's video playlists. And I spent a ton of time in 2013 and 20 and, and just recently, the last couple months, going through different playlists like the basics of libertarianism, the philosophy of libertarianism, our views on the issues, the libertarian movement, and putting together playlists with tons and tons of videos to answer your questions. And then we're taking those videos and slowly rolling those out in the blog section, along with our book recommendations, which you can find under the reading list tab. And we've got uh, basics of libertarianism book list and a link to a bunch of free eBooks from people like the Mises Institute, the Atlas Network, Fee, and then there's a list of podcasts at libertarianpodcast.com, uh, some basic websites, just kind of an overview of other libertarian websites, and then some training. So if you want to get involved in politics, we've got links to our training podcast, Upward, and it's all right here at libertyexplained.com, along with some brief recommended books, sites we recommend. So there is a ton here, and if you click the issues section, it will take you to the page with the various issues. And so what we're trying to do is build a resource for you to share with your friends through this, through not just this presidential election, but through every year, 365, 70, you know, uh, 24 hours a day. That's how many there are. It feels a lot longer <laughs> in the middle of a pandemic. And all of this is brought to you by the patrons of We Are Libertarians and the We Are Libertarians Network. So I want to thank Julia for coming up with the idea, Levy, for being your voice. And if you have questions, then you can email us at ask at wearelibertarians.com. And uh, think of this as like your libertarianism 101 class. And think of We Are Libertarians as your 201, your, your advanced studies. Uh, so this is really just a great resource for you to share. And that's really all it is. We're going to be very fair. We're going to be very broad. We're going to give a bunch of different explanations. We're not going to try and say, if there's a contentious issue, like, let's say abortion. Some libertarians are pro-life. Some libertarians are pro-choice. Some libertarians are in the middle. Some people are evictionists. We'll explain all of that kind of stuff and try to be fair to all the different sides within the movement of libertarianism. So that way we are, are giving everybody equal time because it's not what I think libertarianism is. It's what everybody sort of the consensus of what libertarianism is. So if you're introducing the project, you should probably introduce the co-host. So that's a little bit about what the project is. And so let's get to know Julia and Levy. And for those of you who don't meet, I'll, I'll go last. Um, Julia, tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you a libertarian? What's your path to libertarianism? Um, hi, everyone. Um, so, yes, I'm a libertarian. I, well, I've been a model for a really long time. Um, I own an online course. I owned a transportation company that shut down during the lockdowns. Um, I'm from New Jersey. I've worked in New York City for most of my adult life. And uh, my path to liberty, I've always been a libertarian because I was raised as a libertarian. My family was not very political. Well, so, okay, I lived with my mom growing up. My parents were divorced. My mom's family is Republican. They were um, pretty outspoken Republicans. You know, like if we had family dinners, politics would always come up. And um, my grandma, my mom's side was a staunch Republican. That being said, um, my dad uh, has always been a libertarian. And he was a big influence on me and my brother and my sister politically. And um, also philosophically. Um, so he spent a lot of time teaching us about liberty and about libertarianism and about the principles. So I was really raised on like the fundamentals of freedom um, on an individual basis. And uh, however, <laughs> Up until a few months ago, like I literally never talked about it, like ever. Um, Why? Why didn't you ever talk about it? I honestly, out, aside from like my my dad and his family, like I never had anyone that was aligned or understood libertarianism, or even really anyone that like studies any sort of 
principled philosophy or now we should mention you live in new jersey so that's why (laughs) yeah i mean i live in new jersey i'm like an hour outside of the city i lived in manhattan for 10 years so i've been um like socializing with people in blue states for like most of my life that being said um the area that i'm from in new jersey is largely republican and so i've had a a lot of republican influence um in my life but i completely reject almost all of it um so during like a few months ago um we got locked down in new york and new jersey like really bad during covid um it was pretty intense and i lost like i had to close my business that I started myself, it was self-funded. Like I owned the whole thing. Like I had no investors and I like really like put like a lot of sweat equity into that. Um, Lost my business, lost a lot of money. I lost all my income as a model. And I saw myself just like for the first time in my life, like visibly being at the mercy of like government intrusion. And obviously I saw everyone else around me um, being affected by the lockdowns and it became so, um, I just could not, I couldn't handle like keeping all of this inside anymore. (laughs) Like I was like, I have to talk about this because I was so hurt that I had worked so hard for so many years. And then everything I worked toward got taken from me, you know, because of government interference. And so um, I started talking about it on Instagram, actually. I would just like go live or like like do like a self tape and just kind of rant. And I got so much support right away. And I was like, oh my God, like I was shocked because I was like, I'm gonna lose all my followers. Everyone's gonna hate me and think I'm a psychopath. But I didn't and I was like, huh, this is cool. And then I was like, maybe I should look for other libertarians on Instagram. (laughs) So I did that. I found you, Chris. And then I found a couple other um, Instagram um, pages and then also like some podcasts. I found your podcast, obviously. And then I um, got in touch with you and then I started getting involved and it happened really quick. I went from like never talking about libertarianism to like now like always talking about it. Yeah, and you asked me for like something to share with people and I just was yeah. kind of drawing a blank like libertarianism.com or maybe it's .org. It's .org by Cato is is really good, yeah. but you know there's there's not much out there and a lot of it's kind of dated and so if you're just trying to explain I it was like well maybe try the platform but like who wants to read yeah. a party platform like I don't know. Well, I know. So. And the thing is, like, I, the reason I approached you is because I was following your Instagram, the We Are Libertarians Instagram, and I was listening to your podcast. And I was like, this guy is so cool. He's a millennial. He knows what's up. He uses memes. He's so normal. He's funny. He's cool. And I was just like, I really want some material ah, from on you. <laughs> so, I really wanted material from you because I was like, I don't want some like dusty old material that's like all like theory based and people just they just regurgitate that and that. They, they reject it really like their minds are just like, I don't want to go there. So what I originally asked Chris for, I was like, can you make me some memes, just some like bullet pointed memes that I can just like send out to people. And then we came up with this whole idea to do um, Liberty Explained. But yeah, that's, that's my path to Liberty. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad you're here and um, hopefully yeah. you aren't terribly disappointed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Levy, you've listened a lot longer. I mean, I've you've been yeah. listening since you were in like high school, right? It was actually my first semester of college. So um, I started college when I was 17 and I graduated with my art degree back in May. Um, and what sort of introduced me to libertarianism is I was grow I, I grew up in a very conservative household. Um, my brother uh, was interested in libertarianism and I started sniffing around his books because it didn't make sense. Like I, I needed I thought there had to be another option than the two parties presented to me. And especially since I was about to be of age to vote and I took that very seriously. And, um, but everything that I read was just so over my head in the beginning. Like I just couldn't digest it. And I just started looking for podcasts and I found we are libertarians and I loved how it applied libertarianism to actual events happening currently. And uh, so I just sort of dove in there. And obviously, because I'm a part of the art world, 
it's very liberal. And I was a lot of my conservative ideals that were just passed down to me from my family were challenged and they didn't hold up when they were being challenged. So I was searching for something else. And um, it just libertarianism made the most sense to me. It was the most logical. Like I feel, I felt like it allowed me the freedom to be who I felt like I was called to be. And I'm a very spiritual, religious person. Like I take on that identity way before I take on the identity of a political party. And I felt like that allowed me to, to put that at the forefront. Like I wasn't a Republican. I wasn't a Democrat. Like I was saying, I'm a Christian first and this allows me to operate in that fully and like give the most to that so that's sort of what drew me in i think that's one of the coolest things about libertarianism and liberty as a framework is that it gives space to everybody to live out and self actually exactly. yeah yeah so well for my part i mean yeah as i i grew up in a very um Republican area of Indianapolis. I still live on the south side of Indianapolis in a Republican area. Um, really was into politics. I always have loved the horse race stuff. Like I remember listening to the Clinton impeachment. Family went to a movie. I was like, I need to stay by the radio. Now, what I didn't know then was that it was all like scripted and he was not going to get tossed out. But I was like, there's a chance a president gets removed today. And I was very excited by it. Um, grew up with a grandmother who uh, drove me around. Very fiery woman. And a really hardcore Republican, you know, got mail, gets mail from Bush still. And she's like, he's my friend. And uh, <laughs> listen to Rush Limbaugh every day. I fell in love with talk radio and listening to that with her and hearing her rant about politics. And so I think that's where it all started for me. And then I went to uh, college and I wanted to be in talk radio and I got a job at a talk radio station. But before that, I had. I'd been uh, chair of the college Republicans and I was just a Republican because that's what I, that's what my family was. And it was an inherited uh, political thing. And so um, I was college Republicans chair in 2004. And so, you know, that was a very contentious presidential election with Bush. And, and I realized like, I didn't really buy into what a lot of the other people were saying in the conservative wing, like on immigration or, you know, foreign policy was the final straw. Like, or, or gay marriage. I, I just, I was more liberal, I thought at the time, but what I didn't realize is that I was a libertarian. And so volunteered for this campaign with a guy named Andy Horning and then went to work at a radio station with a guy named Abdul. And they challenged me on my beliefs and I didn't have an answer. And so I started looking into what I believed and realized I was a libertarian and um, first heard the word from Neil Bortz, talk radio show host. And then declared myself like michael scott when he declared bankruptcy i declare libertarianism once i saw ron paul in the debates because the final straw was the foreign policy element and i was like this is what i believe and then went to work for the libertarian party from 2008 to 2012 that was a great experience getting to travel around the state and country working with other libertarians as they set up county parties or ran campaigns or you know i, I wasn't like I was ideologically a libertarian, but I didn't know a lot about the philosophy and uh, I just was, I, I enjoyed politics and then went to work at an ad agency, went on, started the podcast, We Are Libertarians in 2012, kind of in that, in that period. And that was so I could get to know the ideology, to learn more about the philosophy. And we've been doing that since 2012. It's been a great, great, uh, fun thing to do. I've got to make great friends like Levy and Julia and and dozens of other people through this podcast. It's it's such a fun way to build community and, and talk with people. And that's been um, a tremendous intellectual exercise, as has this. This has been really fun to like answer these questions from people and write out answers to things like, what's the libertarian solution to healthcare? Like, I don't know. I think you do you tell me both like you believe this stuff, you this is what I believe, but like if your friend asked you what is the libertarian solution for healthcare, like deer in the headlight sort of look so kind of what we want to do here is give you uh, some knowledge you know give you a reference and and so that way you don't you don't feel as anxious if you start getting asked questions for what you believe so um so that's what we're going to do but um i've definitely become more libertarian over time like I, i've you know i started out like I was a libertarian that secretly rooted for republicans and then as the years have gone on i have i uh I don't care what happens. 
I'm, it doesn't matter if Biden or Trump wins the presidential election. I know I'm getting screwed. Um, and so you start <laughs> to care less about the other two parties. Yeah. Um, but there's, I mean, you guys tell me, you know, if you feel this, Julia, you, you grew up in a different situation, but like, there's always a part of you that's sort of like, I really hope this side wins. Like, I hope this party wins. You know, and the longer you're more a liber libertarian, you're like, I hope neither of them wins because they're rat jerks. Yeah. Um, I definitely feel like <clears throat> I just hope the whole government crumbles. <laughs> 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 which one? I don't care which one wins. They're both awful. Yeah. So <laughs> lose, lose. All right. Well, that, uh, you know. Is there anything else you two would like to add? That's an end. <laughs> <laughs> Levy, anything? Um, if I were to answer that question, I would say that I probably lean more um, liberal than I do conservative. Uh, that appeals a little bit more to things that I care about, but I understand that the Democratic Party can actually serve those needs, even if we do um, supposedly care about uh, similar issues at like the forefront of the platform. I understand that um, you know, they can't serve that adequately. Uh, but that's probably where I lean subtly, but I'm hitting the point where I just want it to all burn. So there's my answer to your question. <laughs> I, love I love it. Uh, all right. Well, thank you both for agreeing to co-host this. I know it's been quite a ride and, uh, you know, we haven't even gotten started, but we're excited to come and do this for everybody. And we just hope that if you get something out of this show, you will share it with friends. That's the sole purpose of this is for you to yeah. share it with your friends. Yeah, please share this with your friends. That's why we're doing this. We're doing little bite-sized clips so you guys can like send it out over the world wide web to everyone there, you know. That's the only way to like, I was listening to this uh, political hack basically say like a yard sign may get you one to two points, an email blast, door knocking, canvassing, it gets one to two points. But if you text your friends and remind them to vote, that can get you 13 points. And it's the same in the podcast world. If you text your friends and say, hey, check this out. We've been talking about this stuff. Then that really helps uh, immensely. So this, this yeah. if, if you've made it into this far into the episode, then you were definitely one of those people that is, qualifies for sending episodes to friends for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for listening to Liberty Explained, and we will see you again soon. <laughs>